you don't know how this thing that you are involved in and the structure of it you would not know what you're about to get yourself involved in and how you ought to structure things whether it's in your mind or in your paper count is a historical title of nobility in certain European countries varying in relative status generally of midland rank in the hierarchy of nobility its homologically related English term county denoted the land listen to this the etymologically meaning the root of the word and understanding of how the word came to be related English term county denoted the land owned by a count if the English term county like Lake County McCoupin County Jane's County and so and so these thousands of counties if that term county denotes the land owned by a count count being a title of nobility should that not give you a clue as to why all recorders is always at the county and whenever you record any land or deed or any trust it's always in the county whenever they do that tax sale it's always through the county whenever they do that scavenger sales it's always in the county whenever they do anything regarding land sale or houses it is always in the county which denotes a land owned by a count this is where people go and record their tax deed their tax sale their warranty deed the trust sale their marriage deed and so on and so forth regarding the land and the house and all the airspace county denotes land owned by count so tell me whenever you go and record a deed in the county which is a land owned by count what are you doing are you subrogating yourself and deliberately handing your own land and property to the count because the county aka the recorder james county recorder james county treasury james county clerk denotes the land owned by a county the clerk the recorder the treasury are handling matters when it comes to monies land and secrets of lands owned by counts because counties denote the land owned by counts these are the one-on-ones that you need to ask yourself before you need to start saying you're a sovereign before you need to start saying you're an heir to the land before you need to start saying they're fraud they're fraud well you're participating in it because you don't even know the basic foundation of what words themselves mean you don't even know the basic foundation of the organization of government. You don't know the basic foundation of what you are involved in. In North America, you have the states. New York State, New Jersey State, Texas State, Nevada State, so on and so forth. But in those states, you have counties and those counties have their own seats of government here is letting you know that that word county that exists within each state denotes meaning it's not a mere loose reference it's not a connotation it's not a conjecture it denotes what it actually really is what it really is these counties in each state are lands owned by a count we just read what a count is it is a title of nobility that certain European countries varying in status holds as hierarchy of nobility so here you are saying you know what I'm going to jump in a bandwagon of equity is where it's at 
I'm gonna jump in a bad my goodness. You know what? Common law. Common law is a solution because common law says this. Common law says that. Yet here you are saying it's their jurisdiction and their fraud. Most of the man and woman who are exposed to information where they think they're trying to free themselves, the people who they think they're trying to free themselves from are really the ones they're going to. Not that that's good or that's bad, but the issue is the lack of comprehension of who is who. Common sense will tell someone that, okay, this thing called the Constitution was finally ratified in 1791 or around that period. In order for someone or something or body politic to come together, it must have first independently existed. And the governmental structures, the English term constitution is just the document that serves as the guideline for certain body politics on a public venue. So that means these other body politics that's coming together to be united, these states that are being united by virtue of one article or some confederation or some form of association one way or the other where is their founding document if so how does it relate to everything and anything else these counties have they existed before the state I think all the Articles of Confederation goes way back, or the Confederate States goes way back. The intent of the people who created it in modern times did not have its origin in 1777. It goes back to around 300 or 400 years before then. And the interaction between certain nobilities, a certain geographical aspect of this world, has been taking place long before George Washington, long before Thomas Jefferson, and all these other so-called founding fathers. They were just the face. If you do not really comprehend these things, you would fall into the trap of saying I'm trying to get away from their system, their system. And where you think you're going is literally a mirror reflection and in fact the exact replication of what you say you're getting away from. The common law and equity people are saying they're going to. It's the same system that is used from where they're saying they're running from. We have to get into the habit of stopping for a moment slowing down and looking at the things that are the most obvious things around us. Everyone knows about how the English has colony here in the Americas and the relationship of the Pope and the Queen of England and the Vatican. Everyone knows about all that. All that hype. When in truth all those faces are they're not even the, they're not the one in power. When you really begin to see who has power, you realize that all that hype, Queen of England, the Pope, they are puny compared to the ones that are actually holding the mantle of sovereignty, controlling all these things. If you're making your beginning point, the founding fathers, George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, all those people, if you're making your starting point, the Magna Carta and so and so, you yourself by your own doing are barring yourself right from the start to your own solution. No wonder people don't read the rules of evidence. No wonder people don't read the basic, simple stuff, the civil procedures. No wonder. People go on about the English this, the English that, common law this, equity this, equity that. Hop off equity's nuts. People don't even know that each state has a library. And if you look into that state library, of any specific county and you read the verbiage of the county's charter they will tell you in black and white quote word for word quote unquote they will tell you 
the direct relationship of that given county, why it existed, and how it is directly linked to Great Britain. And then you begin to see clearly why bar members exist here and how the county is their gateway to North America. Why and how they cannot practice in any court unless they go through the county. Then you begin to be able to navigate in court and commerce and protecting your assets and property properly. Because guess what? When you try to do anything, those agents that you see in the matrix where they spaz all of a sudden and the hobo man walking about and he just transformed into the agent, all those are lawyers. All those are allegories of what actually goes on. They're always there in every step to prevent you. And if you don't know the algorithm of how they function, you are not getting anywhere. People barely even read the stuff within the Library of Congress, let alone the state's library. I don't even know if people know that each state has a library. And those state libraries has way more jewels than the Library of Congress on the United States level. These things are not secrets. They're not hidden. You don't need any privy information or sophisticated knowledge to see these basic and know these basic things. It's openly and abundantly available to you and I. The question you ought to ask yourself is, okay, since counties exist within its quote-unquote states, as far as we're aware of, we are aware of the geographical bounds that they do business at. What are the origins of this counties then? Because obviously counties denote land owned by counts. Count being the title of nobility. Counts, dukes, all those are titles of nobility. Is there anything wrong with that? Whether your conclusion is yes or no is really up to you, depending on who you say you are and your true and firm comprehension of who you really say you are. I'm not here to sway you one way or the other. I'm simply here to just reveal certain things to you and say, all right, there it is. Now you go ahead and think for yourself and now be realistic. More importantly, be realistic about what you say you're doing. The video was done in the past regarding common law, what it really means, and how it's incorporated into each state's jurisdiction. And how the Tsars, the Kaisers, the Kings, are all family members. If you do not comprehend these basic, basic things, You'd be running around in a circle for a whole lifetime, getting nowhere. Be realistic with yourselves. A lot of agreements and a lot of treaties have been entered into before you began to figure these things out. And those agreements and treaties are very much active and can be used. Don't let the mere appearance of something sway you from where your solution is. And don't let someone else's hype train act as a cloud that's pulled over your face for you to see the totality of how things really are. The only way you can ever see the totality of how things are is based on the small subtleties it's always right in front of your eyes. The way some count the title of nobility can own land here in North America is something called peerage. This is Encyclopedia Britannica. What is peerage? The body of peers or titled nobilities in Britain. The five ranks in descendant order are Duke, Marks, Earl, 
C count, which we just went over. This count, unbarren, until 1999. Peers were entitled to sit in the House of Lords and exempt them from jury duty. Titles may be hereditary or granted for life. These are just small examples of titles from what people perceive as Britain. Peerage is another very casual and very mild term. A very mild way of saying intermarry or insist for the purpose of keeping power social political power influence and wealth in the process of this peer age occurring people intermarry that marriage itself becomes a treaty if you really want to learn how treaty law works look into families look into the marriages of different nobilities marrying one another. If you say you're a Moor and you're stuck on that thing called Treaty of Peace and Friendship, that's part of the Mercus Treaty, a hype train is going to be the limits of where your remedy is. And you will be shut down every time you attempt to use it. This is a kind word of truth that you probably will not hear from anyone else. That treaty of peace and friendship that a lot of people use regarding Morocco. We did a video in the past regarding how an unrebutted affidavit is not truth in commerce. And one of the judge made law that everyone hangs on to so much and swings on its balls involved someone who carried the title of nobility bay and attempted to invoke that based on one of the Marques treaties. And the court that they were trying to invoke that, uh, that treaty in schooled him. We briefly went over it in that video in the past. You need to really comprehend the parties involved. Too often you would hear people use a blanket term that, well, uh, because I say I'm a more, everything and everyone comes from me. Uh, that is true to some extent. But when it comes to right of claim, you must be as specific as possible. Because there's a lot more factors involved beyond just you wanting to use a blanket term to claim everything. Just like many people do when they come into this information. There's nothing wrong with you having the zeal and the passion to claim that which is rightfully yours. But know that there are specificities involved in it and you will be held against it and you will be shut down very quick if you don't know what you are talking about. If you just see something about the Treaty of Peace and Friendship, somewhere in some paper, some someone saying because you're more and you're just going on with it and you fail to look at the details of the, the Barbary Treaties the Barbary Wars and the different societies and pockets of societies that existed in certain geographical areas. Just because two groups of people call themselves Moors doesn't even mean they both agree on the same principle or intent, which could have given rise to certain treaties. You are looking completely far away from treaties that benefit you here this landmass that you have primogeniture to and you're looking at something inferior and you're making yourself subject to something inferior to you don't get lost in the sauce stop for a moment look at all these details pay attention to the treaties as it's associated to families and houses therein lies the beginning of your solution really fixing all of this and even beyond that all these things called their rules their rules simple stuff like the civil procedures rules of evidence the doctrines and principles 
those are not theirs baffles me when people say they're on one status or the other in the same breath they say oh it's their rules no it's not it is your shit learn it know it in many cultures around the world the things that people shun and ignore and call their rules their rules you'll be considered a bastard because you've effectively abandoned your ancestral inheritance inheritance is not just land or a house it involves knowledge and wisdom too and apparently a lot of people are missing that simple point when people think of inheritance they think of something corporal or physical gullible people do you not know that knowledge and wisdom accounts for around 80% of what inheritance really is stop being delusional begin to wake up and start being realistic with yourself and in the process of you waking up and being realistic don't miss the fact that there's a totality of circumstance and how everything works in unison stop having a mindset of division the opposing end is already doing that for you stop having a mindset of division the opposing end already has unity and they're doing it very well and you know that yet when you're learning things of this nature you view it from an isolated and a perspective whereby you say no I am this here so yeah you can't do this to me yet yeah, you're abandoning that which rightfully belongs to you and the process of you making a claim that you have a right to something because of what you say or you think you are and the process of you abandoning that which is rightful to you and the process of you claiming what you think you are you're going somewhere else looking at something that completely doesn't even relate to you and then after you take that thing that does not relate to you, you're not walk, walking a path saying, yes, this is the right path. When in truth, you're just going in a circle. If you've ever seen certain movies or certain forms of animations where they show a group of people going, even in the Bible, they show it to you with the Hebrews going around in the forest, going around around the same spot. And one of them go, wait, hold on. We've passed this area, haven't we? And the other party says, no, we haven't. That's not what that mushroom looks like. That this twig had two arms and then the third one says no nah, way I, I i think we have passed the spot before we and, and then everyone just gets confused it's like an hallucination you're going in a circle getting nowhere stop falling for the hype train really understand the intricacies of how government is structured and who's who stop falling for the hype train it's not going to do you anything functional take care and best of luck hey I'm inviting you to come and join my patron if you haven't uh, over there we speak about things but don't talk about it. on YouTube we speak about privacy we speak about trademarks the USPS and how they use trademark products to basically subrogate you we speak about things of spiritual nature we speak about UCC related matters, we speak of how to sue people, audits, we speak of property rights, copyrights, we speak about child support, loans, uh, commerce, we speak about the intricacies of the different types of corporation and how they use it against you. We go over the laws and the verbiage of copyrights, we go over how to create copyrights and trademarks, how to sue people, the intricacies of actual fraud, corporate veil, how it's used against you, how your trust cannot be pierced, uh, the private side of court beyond the commerce. We speak of how to protect your asset and how to enforce it against people. We speak about discharge, different types of discharge, the court of satisfaction, how to go after the oath of bond, how to get their oath and bond, especially on the federal level. We speak of how to create private profiles. We speak of many things regarding privacy in the fourth amendment how to sue them the different type of suits and the relief how to establish probable cause 
speak about copyleft and how it's in fact full faith and credit. We speak about the common laws, public act, session laws, we speak of GSA bonds, how to fill them out, how to put your vehicle on trust, how to not qualify for taxation, and many good study tools, and many, many more to come in the future.